Hey everyone, this video lesson is going to be about showing you how to set up a low float scan to find breakout stocks using the Thinkorswim platform. Before I get into that, this is my website, kafinvesting.com. We'd love to have you come join us on a free two week trial. Head over here, fill out the form, click submit, I'll email you the information that you need and we'll get you in. I will be limiting how many people I allow into the chat room just to make sure that I can offer everyone one-on-one -on -one assistance and mentoring. All right, let's get in and talk about this scan. So again, this is to help find low float stocks. What is a low float stock and why do I wanna try and find them? A low float stock is a stock that has a lower amount of shares available to be traded on the stock market on any given day. To help explain this, let's think about basic economic principles of supply and demand. A low float stock has a low supply. And when a low flow stock drops important news or, or big news, then the demand for that low flow stock increases significantly. But because the supply is limited, that causes for large movements in the price of the stock and gives us lots of volatility. And if you know how to play those patterns and read that news, then that volatility can mean big profits for traders. So. A low flow stock is anywhere between, I'd say up to about 25 million shares. Anything under 25 million shares for a float is considered a low flow stock. And over 25 million, we get into the kind of the medium range and over 100 million, we get to higher flow stocks. And they just don't move as much. High flow stocks are usually a lot steadier. They don't move as much. Penny stocks are typically low flow stocks. If you see a stock move 100%, 200% in a day, it's most likely a low flow stock. So let's talk about how to set the scanner up. Again, this is the Thinkorswim platform through TD Ameritrade, which I use for my trading and I love. Uh, you're gonna click here on this scan button and it will bring up this page here. Now the first thing you wanna do, you're gonna click on this drop down menu here and you're gonna click on volume. That's what we want our first indicator to be. For minimum volume, I typically will look for, I'm gonna put this at 300,000. That means that only stocks that have moved more than, that have traded more than 300,000 shares that day will pull up on my scanner. As for max, we don't want a max. Uh, we can just keep that blank because we don't care. It's unlimited, unlimited volume of stock could trade as many shares. The more volume, the better actually. So it's just, it's just max. But I do want minimum 300,000 shares. That shows me that the stock's getting quite a bit of attention. If it's a slower day though, I can lower this uh, to say, you know, 150, maybe 200,000 shares. But for now, that will fit uh, for what we're trying to do and what I'm trying to show you. Now, the next thing, you wanna click add filter for stock to bring up a second criteria for it to meet. And what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna head on over to, I'm gonna scroll down to last. Last just means basically what the price is. What was the la what was the price of the last trade that went through on this stock? I'm gonna go ahead and put in 40 cents here because I personally don't love to trade stocks that are under 40 cents. Now, if you want to look for you know stocks that are down in the uh, you know if they're five six cent stocks and then feel free to lower that as uh, you know however you please. I just personally don't like to trade under 40 cents. They're just they're they're a little more unpredictable and and hard to be successful with. For max now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this at $30. $30 is a little bit higher than the price of stocks I typically trade, but uh, it'll bring up a, a you know a good safe area of stocks, and I can show you. Um, I'll give you a sample of the type of stocks this brings up, and I'll show you. It's really easy to go through. But again, if you only want to trade stocks under $10, go ahead and set this to 10. If you want to open this up to $50, $60, then go ahead and do that as well. One thing you realize is though that stocks typically over $30 or $20, you usually get into you know the medium float, high float, medium cap, large cap range. Now the next thing we are going to want to take a look at, just click here, scroll all the way to the bottom, percent change. Now for percent change, what we wanna take a look at here, I personally, I do minimum five and a half percent, which means this will only pull up stocks that have moved at least five and a half percent that day. Of course, you just leave this blank max because, you know, if a stock moves 300% a day, we still want it to pull up on this scanner. 
Uh, there's there's no max here. We just want stocks that move have moved at least five and a half percent, showing that they're making a good solid move. So it'll bring up all stocks over five and a half percent. Now for the last one, this is kind of the trickier one, which is where we consider the float aspect. We're going to scroll down here and click on shares. Now this is outstanding shares of a company, and the outstanding shares is basically the total amount of shares that a company has issued for their stock. Now there is a difference between outstanding shares and the share float. The difference is is that the way you get your share float is by taking your outstanding shares and subtracting it by institutional ownership or insider ownership of stocks because those are stocks that can't be traded on any given day. Share float is a stocks that retail investors like me and you can buy on any typical day. So this is out, total outstanding shares and uh, we're looking for share float. It's slightly different, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to meet our purposes for this. What I'm going to do for max, I'm going to do 50 million. And as I mentioned earlier, that's actually a, a, a medium, I'd say about a medium float. And I, this, I'm trying to look for low flow stocks, right? But keep in mind, this is shares outstanding. So if there's a stock that has 50 million outstanding shares, but the float is 20 million, well, that's a low flow stock and it will still pull up with this scanner. As for minimum, no minimum here, because uh, we the lower the float, you know, basically the better for this. So uh, it's after market now, but let's go ahead and pull up what um, what kind of stuff we would be seeing from this. I'm gonna go ahead and click on scan, just give you a sample. Brought up 31 stocks, so 31 stocks today met this requirement. Now you might say, wow, that's kind of a lot, you know? How do we, how, you know, how do you, how do you filter from there? Well, you can tighten up and change these parameters. Um, if you wanna change this, you know, the, to $10 and, and maybe raise this to only stocks over a dollar, that'll, that'll lower it even more. Or if you want to uh, make sure you're getting low floats, you can change this to 30 million instead of 50 million. Uh, volume, you can raise this to 500 million, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when I click on scan, I have my stocks, they're all lined up by volume. So typically, I'll just look at the top because the highest volume stocks are the most active of the day, obviously. Um, and also, if it's earlier in the morning, say we're only an hour or two into the stock market, obviously, there's not going to be nearly as many stocks because this is including the volume for the whole day. I said minimum 300,000. This is including that for the whole day. So if it's an hour into the stock market, there won't be this many stocks. It'll probably be two or three stocks, quite honestly. And uh, if it's really early in the morning, I may want to lower this to only 100,000 to see to see what's moving. All right, so this is the setup for my low flow scan. Now I want to show you some other cool things about uh, what you can do with this. First thing we want to do is we're going to go in here. And well, first thing you want to do is save this. Let's save this scan. Let's let's label it low flow. So our scan is now saved, low float, so we can pull it up whenever we want. Now one really cool thing that I want to show you is to create a watch list to have it alert you whenever new stocks pop up onto your scan. So you can be just, you know, middle of the day looking for things to trade and all of a sudden your thinkorswim platform will alert you, hey, a new stock just, you know, just popped onto your low float scan. It's awesome and it helps you catch plays right as they're happening. So what you go, you're going to go in here. And I have this as a, as a symbol is added. If you want, you could also do it when a symbol is removed from it. I'm not sure why you mentioned that. You could do both. I'm going to keep it as a symbol. Uh, whenever a symbol is added, whenever stock meets the criteria, it's going to let me know. So uh, no, I'll just say new low float. So I'll get an alert. They'll say a new low float stock has been added. Notify with sound. You can change this if you want. Um, some different options here. But this is just pretty simple here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click create. So now, whenever a new low flow stock is, a little notification is gonna appear on the top left of my corner, and it's gonna let me know I have a new stock. Now, let's say you wanna keep check out this watch list over here on the left. Well, we have some pretty cool options here. You see, when I'm I'm on the watch list tab here, this is a watch list. When I click on this, I can go and select my watch list. See this that has that purple target right there. Well, that is all the stocks that are on my low flow scan. And this watch list will automatically change all by itself as stocks are added and removed uh, from meeting the criteria for, for the scan. So this is the low float scan. I hope this is helpful using Thinkorswim. Try to keep it pretty simple for you guys. Feel free to uh, thumbs up this video and subscribe if you are liking the uh, information you're getting and comment if you have any questions. And uh, 
Again, you can head over to my website, kfinvesting.com. We'd love to have you join us in and start your free two-week trial.